I was fortunate to know people like Krishnamacharya, the teacher of the teachers, and his son. They're serious people who sussed out, what is yoga? What is it? And more importantly, how do you make use of yoga? You, you personally. Right? So it goes way beyond this, you know, the male, di the male doctrine that creates a dichotomy of trying to get somewhere as if something's absent. That we, we've left that behind now for decades, or at least since the 1960s anyway. We're not trying to get anywhere as if something is absent. All right? We're not trying to get to God as if God is absent. That's, that makes us miserable. That's made mankind miserable. It's allowed guys to fly planes into buildings. You know, It's a gross denial of the wonder of our natural condition. Trying to get somewhere else, as if truth is somewhere else, is a cultural, social implant. It's bad software that's gone in. And we're going, delete, 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 and we can't get rid of it. We still think that truth is some, has to be found, as if it's not, as if it's absent in my breath and heartbeat. You know what I'm saying? And we've still got that habit, that social implant in us. It's not true. Truth doesn't have to be found. You don't have to do a damn thing. It's in me as me, as my breath and heartbeat and sex and growing hair and, you know in your shining eyes, it's already what is the situation. It's a wonder that cannot be fathomed, already the case. Now yoga, rightly understood, is merely the participation in that wonder which is already given. Sheerly the participation, right? It's not trying to get anywhere. And the analogy that I like the most is the sun, you know? The sun is the source of our solar system, isn't it? Right? Okay, got that? Okay, everybody have a two second meditation. Where are we without the sun? Right? So it's all, it's all over now, isn't it? It's all very clear. Now, I'm not trying to seek for the sun and get closer to the sun. Am I? You're not, you know, we enjoy the sun, the tacit presence of the sun. I don't even think about it. I have no philosophy or mind around the sun. I enjoy the, you know, it's, and the wonder of my life is based around it, isn't it? The cycles of the sun. And it comes out and says, whoa, thank you. You know, I'm not seeking for the sun as if the sun is absent. I'm enjoying the sun. The same, see, please, if God is our source, if God is the absolute condition of my being, it's not something that I have to look for. It's given. It's already the case. See, so the mind folds up from this bad software, the social implant of trying to look for truth as if it's absent. You hear what I'm saying? Then yoga starts. Then. Then I go, ah, you know? then I become intimate with my own life because it's already given. And that's what I want to give you. Quite clearly, get it right, I want to give you the intimacy with your own life, your own body and breath. Now, in time, that obviously implies intimacy with all other experience. You know, that's why I put my book, Body, Breath and Intimacy, in that order. And there's a man in the back of the room who can who's already spoken to me about that implication of coming into intimacy with your own life implies intimacy with everything else. But in that order, right? So body, breath, and relationship, relationships, but including and especially your, you know, your special intimate other. That is all yoga, in that order. Body, breath and relationship, in that order. Not based on a search trying to get to something as if something's absent, but as a sheer participation in the wonder that is already the case. Got it?
So we start like this. I want to give you a very short and simple practice where I'm going to teach you the principles of Hatha Yoga. Right? And uh, we'll do that and see, see how you feel. Let me recap and say again, what I want for you out of the end of this day, and I'm very sincere about this, is I want you to know how to practice Hatha Yoga. Unequivocally, certainly, that you can walk out of this room and for the rest of your life be a Hatha Yoga practitioner and therefore get all the you know, social, cultural, personal advantages of being a yoga practitioner. Now, would anyone dispute that as a good goal? I bet everyone has a certain sort of like doubt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do, do you have that? Oh, yeah. Life comes along. Huh? Life comes along. <laughs> and intervenes. But that's the point. As, like, you know, that living is miserable, but life is a perfect situation, isn't it? Right? What, this, what the social mind does to life is ruin it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But life comes perfectly delivered. The whole process of coming into birth and then coming out of here, go, you know, birth and death, is utterly natural. Isn't it? To the given situation. But somehow the, the human mind has maladapted to that situation and made us all miserable, globally miserable, and personally miserable. Is anyone here who's not personally miserable? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, you, you know, maybe not out of hour, or, you know. But there are restrictions, aren't there? There are things impacting us, you know. Anti nature. And. Anti-nature. Right, yeah, An yeah, exactly. Thank you. Anti, what I would call the natural state. However, the natural state is given. And it's not in doubt, is it? Right. I know there are fundamental difficulties to being alive, you see. And that's why such regard for the Buddhist uh, doctrine and, and the great... Buddhas such as the Dalai Lama, who makes it very clear, you know, that life is suffering. It's a subset of the whole. It's not the whole story, but it's a big part of the story. There is a fundamental difficulty in being alive and in coming into individual form and struggling into growth to become human and then pass out of here. Is There's a difficulty to that. And it's a fundamental difficulty that we cannot get out of, avoid. And the Buddhists understand that very well. In the West, we've been indoctrinated to imagine that we can attain happiness as some sort of permanent condition with houses and cars and relationships and money and acquisition of all kinds. And when we inevitably find out that life is suffering, we add in the West our shame to that part of the equation. We suffer in the West from the, this phenomena of low self-esteem when we find out that life is suffering and we are suffering. 